All people talk about, I suppose, after a year on being on the job is, because I see it now, um, I've worked with guys and they do say that to me and it's hard, like, obviously I'm all ears. G'day and welcome to another episode of Fit for FIFO, where in part two of Kayla's interview, she shares with us what it's like to work in the same industry as her partner and also her mum, and how they maintain their healthy relationships. She also shares with us a change she made after a tip from a friend, which had a big positive impact on her career. So let's get straight into it. So um, with what you know from uh, your experience in the industry, what's the one thing you think if someone had told you before you started would have helped you like enormously? The one thing um, would be just confidence in finding my feet regardless of the fact that I am young. Yep. Um, when I was first doing my apprenticeship, it took me two years to come out of my shell. I was very quiet, you probably wouldn't believe that, but I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my friend actually that's helped me get to where I am today and helped me get this position I'm going for now, uh, I'd always just whisper to him in the background when tradesmen are trying to you know, sort through a problem mm. and he'd say, speak up, and I wouldn't. I would just tell him and then an hour later they come to the conclusion that I had and yeah, it took me two years to do that and when I did, I did find myself you know, starting to progress career-wise. Um, I was more confident with my work and, you know, working with other people, they could see that. And uh, it's made me take big steps, like going to work on the island and going to work for commissioning. Yeah. So I've progressed quite quickly in this job role now. I think I never would have been able to do it if uh, my friend didn't tell me then to find my own feet and have confidence in yourself. Yeah, because I didn't realise that you know this trade would get me where I am. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's a big thing to have confidence, find your feet, um, regardless of you know yeah, age, where you are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I suppose you, you don't actually stay in a camp yet, but um, just say for um, just when you actually go to work, what's the one thing that you never forget to take to work with you, or or have at work with you? Never forget to take to work with me. Um, ah, a protein bar. Protein bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you work long hours. Um, so between breakfast and smoker is like three and a half hours, four hours. And yeah. So yeah, just snacks. I need, I need a protein bar. Yeah, yeah snacks. Just a snack in between the breaks. <laughs> yeah. So, because your, your mother is an um, FIFO? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. what would you say is the best tool um, for maintaining your relationship in with, with your mum? Like, um, something yeah. you use? Um, making that effort when she does call. Um, I used to get a little bit annoyed. Uh, yeah, we would be annoyed because she'd be calling, you know, every night. It's mm -hmm. just five minutes or ten minutes of like your time that she wants. Um, and for the first few months, you know, I found it hard just, you know, her needing to call me so often. And now Shane working away, I realise, you know, you do need that. Um, even just hearing that person's voice. So I think it's important to make the person in camp, uh, make sure they know they're not alone. So. Yeah, that's awesome. You just yeah. hit the nail on the head there. What do you find the best way is for you to find um, information about the next job? Um, with the people I'm working with, really, and Facebook and LinkedIn have actually, yeah, have a lot of information. I didn't realise. Um, yeah, so I've just made a LinkedIn account well, in the last few months now, I think it is, and yeah, yeah it's actually quite a lot of jobs, uh, opportunities have come up on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and you said Facebook, um, do you mean just like to communicate with guys at work, or is there other, like, uh, Oh yeah, there's just forums, I guess, on Facebook, people join and oh, yeah. um, post jobs up to, like, especially for Gladstone, because 70% uh, of work around Gladstone that's up and coming is through labour hire companies, mm -hmm. and they'll always be on Facebook posting on forums. Yeah. Because um, major industries, they don't take people on casually, so it's all the all the little um, labour hire companies. So it's actually the one place that I'd use for Gladstone. Okay. Mm. In terms of um, 
keeping the workers happy, yeah. like in the industry, um, is there anything you think that the employers might be lacking, like something that they could do better? Um, I'd say morale. I mean, I know, like personally, our team, you know, they mm-hmm. kept it quite high, but I see it lacking a lot. Um, like on the side, just little things like we had barbecues in our clusters in our crib art areas where we eat lunch yeah. um, on my last job. And, you know, our supervisor made sure we had a barbecue every Friday. You know, everyone just puts in $5, yeah. someone gets all the food together. And yeah, for that smoker, we'll have a barbecue, you know? And yeah. it's just a little bit of a boost. Um, I think, yeah, morale's a really important thing to yeah. have on site. And it is lacking, but it's something that can be so easily fixed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. So maybe like the employee being more open to like these ideas and, and encourage. Yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't have to be you know barbecue, but just like encouraging the team to you know work as a team to yeah. feel comfortable at work because they are they're in hard you know they're away from their families for so long. So yeah. you need to make sure that person feels good while they're at work. Yeah. <laughs> Work, like when you're working in the industry for, for a long time, you're doing big hours. And, yeah. Um, you know, you're not really too involved in your normal life so yeah. much. What's some, is this, um, what's some easy things that people forget? I suppose just making time for people. Um, with me, because I, I was working six days a week, you know, that one day off, I kind of just blow people off because I only get one day to myself, so I kind of just utilize that to work on me and get things I want to get done Uh, but yeah people my my close friends started noticing and then I realized I stopped getting invited to things so I think it's important to you know make those relationships and make the effort to see the people yeah right yeah they can Mm. because I suppose you are in a way you are um like you're making a sacrifice to do this work but you should always sort of think about yeah like you've got to remember the impact that it will have if you don't mm. continue to maintain those relationships eh? yeah like I did when we had overtime available I did it for three months and it just destroyed me so I think it's you need to know your limits you need to remember not everything is about work mm-hmm. which is why I guess I'm feeling a, a little lost now yeah <laughs> having all this time but yeah yeah uh, the FIFO industry and um, heavy industry, I suppose, like that, with the um, the workload and the hours and stuff you do, it's known to cause like c- can cause like damage to people like in their social environment, their mental, physical, everything. Yeah. What in um, your situation? So um, I suppose you got a partner and, and your family and stuff. What sort of time frame would you recommend um, someone with no clue to how long they're going if they're getting into it? How long they're going to do it for? What would you recommend? Oh, I wouldn't say any more than five years. Um, it's been hard enough with mum working away for one year and Shane isn't even on his first swing and I'm already thinking about, you know, how how am I going to cope with this? Yeah. Um, I see people who have worked it for longer and, yeah, they're, they're not that happy. They're, you know, they're not home. And all people talk about, I suppose, after... A year on being on the job is home, wanting to get home, wanting to get out. So yeah. I think maximum I'd go five years. Yeah. Um, Say your um, absolute best mate comes up to you and says, Kale, I'm not coping well with this um, FIFO. I, I, like, I, I can't get out. I can't afford to get out. Yeah. What would your advice be to them? Like, they can't, literally can't afford to. Well, they say, that's what they tell you. Advice. That's what they tell you. Um, well make sure take time sit down with them and get them to explain why they can't afford it i suppose um you know sacrificing your own mental health for you know just because financially you may be struggling that i don't think that's worth it at all um like there are other options there are people there for support so um i'd advise them think about it um because it isn't, it's not everything, it's not all you have. I know people get used to it, get used to the lifestyle, the money, but, you know, you can get out and, you know, people have and they're doing well still, so. Yeah, just let's say um, someone came up and said, oh, look, Kayla, I'm not coping well with with um, this being away from home. Yeah. What would your first thing you say would be? Um, well, ask them if they're okay. I know 
um, you know, are you okay day is not really a laugh, really. Because mm. um, I, I see it now. Um, I've worked with guys and they do say that to me and it's hard. Like, obviously I'm all ears, but I tell them, you know, um, talk to their partner about it and, yeah. you know, because it's more important to go home be with your family. Family's always number one yeah. for me, always. Yeah. So my mum and stepdad, uh, with mum working away, she's been away a year now, uh, they've got a deal if one of them says they can't cope with it anymore then mum will stop and come home so yeah mm. and then vice versa if your mum wants to come home yeah well i hope you enjoyed that if you missed part one of kayla's interview you can find it on our youtube channel along with the rest of our fit for fifo episodes on next week's episode of fit for fifo we take you for a tour through a fifo camp dining hall also known as a mess if you have any questions comments or feedback for kayla or myself We'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs>